While normally I don't make off-the-cuff videos like this, this one really pissed me off. The media is going crazy over Trump's comments about a Wisconsin rally where Trump made some abortion comments and the evidence is all over the internet. Watch Trump dismantle your will to live during his unhinged rally. During his unhinged monologue, the president said many ridiculous things that will sap your will to continue living in this nightmare dystopia, including accusing mothers and doctors of executing newborns. Speaking about abortion, Trump brought up a lie he's been touting for a while that newborn babies are executed by their mothers and doctors. He accused Democrats of aggressively pushing extreme late-term abortion, allowing children to be ripped from their mothers' womb right up until the moment of birth. Another article writes, the forced birth movement has always used lies to push their agenda. Notice how they call pro-life forced birth movement because it sounds more menacing. This is also part of the indoctrination scheme, changing the verbiage on topics to try and demonize opposition. Pro-life sounds good because being pro-life is good, trying to end life is bad. But forced birth makes it sound as if pro-lifers are forcibly doing doing something to people, which they aren't, other than forcing you to not kill your own baby. But let's move on. Partial birth abortion has become part of the lexicon now, even though it doesn't exist. Uh, that's a lie. It does exist. Governor Nordham was awkward with his wording, but what he was talking about was situations in which a baby is born that will not survive. Out of context, eh? The out of context lie is an ongoing trend as Democrats get crazier by the minute. The out of context lie was also pushed repeatedly about Ileana Mars' comments on poo-pooing terrorists who carried out 9-11. We were told repeatedly that her comments were out of context. But like most things Democrats say, it's a total lie. Her comments were provided completely in context, and they lie about it in an attempt to make her not sound horrible. But in this situation too, they say Ralph Nordham's abortion comments were out of context. Well, let's look. Nordham responded to a question about delegate trans comments, her comments where she said that killing babies even while it's being delivered would be okay. There's a Virginia bill that is now set to legalize abortion all the way to point of birth. It was introduced by Democratic delegate Kathy Tran in Virginia. When questioned about the bill on Monday by a Republican delegate named Todd Gilbert, the Virginia House Majority Leader acknowledged it would allow abortion even at the very end of pregnancy when a woman was going into labor. So the woman is going into labor at 37 weeks of pregnancy, and you, sh you can plunge a knife into the back of the baby's head and kill it under this bill. Okay, here's this lady acknowledging exactly that. It's pretty astonishing. How late in the third trimester could a, a physician perform an abortion if he indicated it would impair the mental health of the, of the woman? Or physical health. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm um, talking about the mental health. So, I mean, through the third trimester. The third trimester goes all the way up to 40 weeks. Okay, but to the end of the third trimester. Yep, I don't think we have a limit in the bill. So where it's obvious that a woman is about to give birth, she has physical signs of, of, that she is about to give a birth, would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? She's dilating. My bill would allow that, yes. This is infanticide. There's another way to put it. That is infanticide. If you believe that the, the, the 10 centimeters between the dilation of the cervix and the exit of the separate human being from the womb is all that defines humanity, you are insane. This is full-scale support of infanticide. And it's now being backed by Virginia Democrats in New York. This has already become legal. You, there, there are, I, I believe, seven states where you can now abort a baby all the way up till point of birth. And well, I mean, this is utterly uncontroversial stuff. We're not talking about a, we're not talking about a fertilized embryo. We're not talking about an egg that was fertilized three days ago and whether or not you should be able to get a morning after pill. Okay, what we are talking about now is a fully formed human baby in every aspect. Every aspect of this baby is completely formed. This is infanticide. If for the mental health of the woman, you believe that you can cut a baby apart in the womb that is fully alive, th this, is, this is insane. So where it's obvious that a woman is about to give birth, she has physical signs of, of, that she is about to give a birth, would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? She's dilating. My bill would allow that, yes. My bill would allow that, yes. So she made it clear you can murder the baby as it's being delivered. Nordham was asked about these comments, and let's see if his comments were actually out of context. And governors, you know the issue of abortion rights emerges every year in the General Assembly session, this year no exception. There was a very contentious committee hearing yesterday when Fairfax County Delegate Kathy Tran made her case for lifting restrictions on third trimester abortions as well as other restrictions now in place. And she was pressed by a Republican delegate about whether her bill would permit an abortion even as a woman is essentially dilating, ready to give birth. And she answered that it would permit an abortion at that stage of labor. Do you support her measure and, and explain 
her answer. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I wasn't there, uh, Julie, and I, I certainly can't speak for uh, Delegate Tran, but um, I would tell you, one, uh, first thing I would say, this is why decisions such as this should be made by providers, uh, physicians, uh, and uh, the uh, mothers uh, and fathers that, that are involved. Um, there are, you know, when we talk about third trimester uh, abortions, these are done uh, with the consent uh, of obviously the, the mother, with the consent uh, of the physicians, more than one physician, by the way. Um, and it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities, there may be a, a, a fetus that's non-viable. So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion. Uh, but again, we want the government not to be involved in these types of decisions. We want the decision to be made by uh, the, the mothers and their providers. And, and this is why Julie, that legislators, most of whom are men, by the way, shouldn't be telling a woman what she should and shouldn't be doing with her body. The author writes, Governor Nordham was awkward with his wording, but what he was talking about was situations in which a baby is born that will not survive. Yes, he was talking about that situation, but the question he was asked was in response to trans comments where she provided no such prerequisite to killing a baby. Nordham, however, like a true Democrat politician, pivoted the question and responded, demonstrating his support for her comments, although he just tweaked the scenario because what Tran said was outright terrible and the last thing Democrats want to do is let everyone know how awful their infanticide-loving fetishes really are. But his comments were not out of context. He was specifically asked about killing babies the moment of birth and he supported that, albeit altered the circumstances, using a circumstance of severe deformities. However, the legislation does not require that in order to kill the baby. It only says that the woman's health is at risk. The word health is important because her health could be mental or just stress. And under those conditions, there is no real criteria. The mother can kill her baby because she says she's under stress. The bill in question, HB 2491, specifically eliminates the state's requirement that second and third trimester abortions to be performed only to preserve the health or life of the woman. The author writes, this quote taken out of context has been twisted into after birth abortion and has become the new Planned Parenthood sells baby parts style lie. But it's not out of context. He just pulls a good old bait and switch with his answer. The legislation Republicans are attempting to pass which Democrats have blocked 20 times, is saying that in that situation where you tried to kill the baby but it survives and is now a living person, it now deserves the same protections that humans do and doctors should try to save the baby, as opposed to, you know, just dropping it in the sink and ignoring it until it dies. But they use a situation where a baby naturally has severe complications and may not survive and use that scenario as an example for why they aren't committing infanticide. The author goes on, Trump isn't the only one who made this up. I've had people on Twitter and elsewhere who I sometimes caution engage tell me with complete certainty that women are allowed to give birth and then decide if they want the baby to live or not. Oh, so her evidence and sources are some people on Twitter who have told her something. Great. The real tragedy of this is that the situations in which a very much wanted pregnancy ends in birth of a boy or girl who cannot survive outside the womb happen with heartbreaking frequency. Any law that Republicans manage to pass in response to this new lie is only going to make those situations harder for everyone involved. But the law in question is that when a mother and abortionist try to murder a baby but it survives, the murder attempt and is now out of the womb, a now living human infant would have protections under the law and physicians would be required to provide it medical care in an attempt to save its life. How would passing that legislation only make those situations harder for everyone involved? Well, of course, the propagandist posing as a journal doesn't say. She then goes on to post a bunch of tweets from a nurse who delivered babies who were born with severe complications and end up dying naturally, which is not at all the question Norton was asked about, or the legislation which is being discussed, despite him answering answering the question that way. I've seen other women share their stories about these tragedies. It's a shame that they are being forced to come forward because of the craven lies told by a movement that claims righteousness. It's a testament to how readily the forced birth movement propagates and believes lies that it became part of their mythology so quickly. Virtually every left-wing propaganda outlet joined the lies. Inquisitor writes, Trump's claims have been proven false. Who were they proven false by? Oh, the fake fact checker, an egregious left-wing indoctrination publication, PolitiFact. What does PolitiFact say? They write, under the bill, any infant born alive after an abortion or within a hospital clinic or other facility is the same claim to the protection of the law that would arise for any newborn or for any person who comes to a hospital clinic or other facility for 
screening and treatment or otherwise becomes a patient within its care. The bill goes on to say that anyone except the mother who intentionally performs or attempts to perform an overt act that kills a child born alive can be prosecuted for intentionally killing or attempting to kill a human being. Right, that's what Republicans want. Democrats, of course, have blocked that legislation which would outright stop this infanticide. PolitiFact writes, perhaps the Democrats' most basic argument in context of Trump's charge, however, is that law already exists to cover the scenario the bill would seek to prevent, making the new bill redundant. Most legal experts we contacted agreed with this much of the Democrats' argument, killing a baby after birth is already against the law. And then she quotes some professor, uh, part of the reason that tensions over abortion have been heightened this year is the consideration of bills in two states, New York and Virginia, to ease some of the state-level rules governing abortions, particularly, particularly late-term abortions. Critics of the Democratic position on the Senate bill say the redundancy argument is a fig leaf for political considerations. If Democrats agree with the overall principle, the argument goes, there is little harm in passing a law that reinforces existing statutes. Right. Personally, I do not think it credible for Democrats to say they are against executing babies after birth if they are unwilling to provide criminal and civil penalties to abortion doctors that kill babies that survive abortions, nor provide equal standard of medical care for such babies. It is largely rhetorical strategy to get out of an embarrassing situation. Right. PolitiFact writes, in reality, both sides agree that active killing of a breathing newborn is and should be illegal, which is not true, which is why we're talking about this. There is a broad consensus that a child that takes its first breath has crossed a bright line from fetus to child and should be protected by the law. That's actually not a broad consensus. Most people are against abortions after three months, so they think of a fetus after three months is actually should be protected. So uh, that's that's another lie, but this is a clear-cut concept that we can all agree upon, said another professor. The notion that anyone supports executing infants after birth is preposterous, which is another lie. More complicated are cases in which the newborn is so severely disabled that they may not survive beyond a few days. That's not what we're talking about here, political fact, then again, many abortions that occur later in pregnancy involve fetal anomalies incompatible with life. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about naturally occurring problems. Babies born post-abortion, spontaneous or induced with horrible or and potentially painful conditions incompatible, incompatible with life. That's not what we're talking about. But what is their ruling? There's little question that the vote on the Senate bill was uncomfortable for Democrats. They effectively voted against a bill whose principles they said they support, which is not shocking at all to any Republican or think person, arguing that the bill would be redundant because those principles are already enshrined in law. However, Trump overreached when he described Democrats as tolerating executing newborns. No one supports actively killing newborns, much less executing them. The contested terrain concerns what efforts should be made to extend the lives of babies who are not expected to survive long with severe disabilities. We rate this statement false. Do you see that? Do you see what they just did? The contested terrain concerns what efforts should be made to extend the lives of babies who are not expected to survive long with severe disabilities. That's that's not the contested terrain. That's not at all what we're talking about. That's not what Republicans are upset about. That's not what Delegate Tran said when she said that mothers could kill their babies coming out of the womb. She did not say that they had to be, have severe disabilities. Governor Norton was asked the question about her comments, and he brought up a situation with severe disabilities, but that's not what she was talking about, and that's not what Republicans are talking about. But they're using that scenario as justification for not providing babies protections after they try to kill it and now out of the womb? It's amazing. It's really amazing. Vox also disputes the claim Democrats commit infanticide, saying infanticide is illegal and no abortion rights groups support it, which is also a lie. They all support it. But see, they simply don't call it infanticide. No, no. The worst thing Democrats could do is call their terrible behavior what it actually is. They call it an abortion, but when the baby miraculously survives the abortion, they simply don't provide it any medical care. So a seriously wounded baby by attempting to murder it, but miraculously survives, and then you just dump it in the sink and ignore it, that baby will, of course, die. It won't survive if you don't provide any medical care or try to save it. So you see, that's not infanticide. That's just letting the baby die. You know, just like when a baby is born with severe deformities or complications and won't survive. They're not executing it. They're just letting it die. But this is what they do. They dominate the media headlines claiming what Trump said was a lie. They dominate search results with articles saying it's a lie. They cite their fellow propagandists that proclaim themselves to be unpartisan fact checkers, which they aren't, but they use that as evidence to support their claims. And all the while using straw men scenarios and applying those situations to justify their own even though they're under drastically different circumstances. Because today, being a Democrat is synonymous with liar, and lefties know full well after 100 years of getting PhDs in propaganda that if they just say it enough and dominate all the mass communication systems, then people will surely believe it. She has physical signs of, of, that she is about to give a birth. Would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? She's dilating. My bill would allow that, yes.